Good afternoon and welcome to St. Barnabas. Our opening hymn is in Breaking Bread, the book in front of you, 598, Christ Be Our Light. Please stand. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. My fault, my fault, my fault. Therefore, I ask the Spirit and and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie
let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the, is the test of the just. The fruit of the tree shows the care it has had so the too does the speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this, which is corruptible, clothes itself in incorruptibility, and this, which is mortal, closes itself with immortality, then the word has, that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher, but when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye? when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrite, remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from the torn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of the store of goodness in his heart produces good. But an evil person out of the stores of evil produces evil, for from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eyes, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your, own, in your own? How true it is. How it is 
to find fault with things and people. No matter how good a person or a thing may be, it is easy, very easy, to find some fault with them. And at the same time, fail to see our own faults. We may notice a minor, a small fault in someone, a splinter, and at the same time, we do not notice a major fault, a plank in ourselves. We judge others to be blind, having a splinter in their eye, while being unaware of our own greater blindness, a plank in our eye. We are blind, and yet we claim to be able to lead the blind. We can easily think of ourselves as better than others and set ourselves up as the judge of others, criticizing their faults in our minds and hearts. So today, Jesus is suggesting that a healthy awareness of our own feelings and weaknesses can make us hesitate to address the feelings of others. We are all sinners without exception. Our sin prevents us from seeing as the Lord sees with the eyes of love and compassion. In that sense, we are all blind. We do not see clearly in the clear light of God's love. We can so easily get it round when it comes to others, as the scriptures tell us. We look at appearances, and it is only God who looks at the heart. There are so many things which blind a person. Anger, pride, and hypocrisy. And all these can prevent a person from going beyond the shadows of another. Judging others without first talking and confronting them is itself an act of injustice. Our gospel reading according to Luke invites us to go extra mile, to know others deeply, and to recognize their potentials, talents, and gifts. It invites us to cleanse our eyes from all prejudice and hatred, from anger and apathy. Self-examination removes the wooden being of self-righteousness in our hearts. Knowing our weaknesses and our sins could only make us humble and respectful in dealing with other people. With compassion and understanding, we could see clearly that the person we are judging is a brother or a sister. If we recognize our own feelings, weaknesses, and sins, the plank in our eye, then the Lord will renew us in his love. So this evening, I would like to conclude my sermon with the words of Sister Thessa Ardita from the book of Bible Diary. She said, learn before you teach. Cleanse yourself before 
you require it of others. Clarify ideas before you demand action. Search for the truth before you give your judgment. Forgive, forgive before you ask to be forgiven. Renew your mindset and transform your ways before you claim your Christian identity. Then perhaps we will hear Jesus telling us, happy are you, humble and true. Hypocrisy is far away from you. You are my disciple. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever, shall be, world without end. Amen. Now I would like to invite Rachel and Andy Miller to talk about covenant renewal. Thank you, Father. Uh, my name is Andy Miller and my wife, Rachel. Uh, we have three boys. Uh, in the fall, all three of them will finally be old enough to be in St. Barnabas School uh, with our little one there. Um, last Advent, Father Guy shared a homily on discipleship with us. Um, and he talked about how one cannot e-learn discipleship. He talked about how one must be in the presence of the master, that we must come here to learn how to be Jesus's disciple. And, and I was preparing, preparing and reflecting for this witness, this idea of stewardship as discipleship kept coming to me. That when we come to the church to learn how to be a disciple, we bring with us our time, our talents, and our treasure. And that is by sharing this time and talent and treasure with our fellow parishioners and with our community that God teaches us how to be disciples. Um, so we've been asked today to share a little bit about what that looks like for our family. Um, and when we moved to the parish, we had a meeting with Patty Kane and we said, okay, it's a stewardship parish. What, is, what does that mean? Bottom line it for us. And she said, well, we ask our parishioners to tithe 10%, 5% to the parish and 5% to whatever they choose. And so we said, okay. We went home, we sat down, we figured out how much money we make, we divided it, oh, excuse me, we took 5% of that and we divided it by 12 and set up monthly payments. Um, these first fruits represented our commitment to the financial support of our parish. When we sit down to make our yearly or our monthly budget, this is the first line that we add. Over the years, that actual number has gone up and down, um, but the commitment remains unwavering. Our commitment to the second 5%, it, while it might not be as straightforward, I think is something that we are all probably more familiar with and is something that I think we're really much more generous with if only someone would help us to realize that that's 5% of our tithing. And these are the things that um, for us include giving to the United Catholic Appeal. Um, for us, we like giving to the United Catholic Appeal because the donation goes to help um, seminarians, retired clergy, expecting mothers, food pantries, refugees, natural disaster victims, all these things that we would like to give to, but we don't necessarily know how or where we can do with the donation to the United Catholic Appeal. We also feel very blessed that um, St. Barnabas School is really interested in being a partnership with our uh, families. Um, and they help teach this idea of stewardship and giving back to the community with our children as well. Be it pay a dollar for dress down or bring canned food uh, items for whatever donation. Um, these help teach our children stewardship as well. 
and as a parent, uh, they do add up over the months. Um, after that, we find that there are always thin mints to buy or red kettles to feed. Uh, there is always an eighth grade student or a Roncalli high school somewhere, high school student somewhere who has something to sell you. Um, and we try to do our best to support them. Um, all of these small donations along the way is what help make up that second 5% for us so we can get to our 10% goal. God has given us all many talents. I share my passion for numbers through volunteering with Project Gabriel. I use my organizational skills to support the mom's ministry. I put my social energy towards volunteering events like National Catholic Youth Conference. Andy uses his theology degree to teach RCIA at multiple parishes and also facilitates the baptismal preparation classes here at St. Barnabas. Our boys are discovering their talents at St. Barnabas School and are practicing sharing these talents through the Little Helping Hands ministry and other activities. Lastly, we are intentional about spending time within the St. Barnabas community outside of Sunday Mass. We like to take advantage of the spiritual formation and service opportunities sponsored by the parish. We include our kids in five-minute adoration chapel visits, taking a walk to visit the Mary statue outside, or even just gathering at the playground. We find that the more that we come here, the more we can take our experiences at Barnabas out to our greater community. So this is a little bit about how we share our time, talents, and treasure in our family. We are sure God has given you and your families unique talents to share, ministries that you would like to dedicate your time to, and charities and organizations to contribute to. It's truly beautiful what we can do as a parish when we all share what God has given to us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rachel and Andy. God bless your family. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us humbly present our prayers and petitions to the Lord with faith and trust. For the church, may God's grace empower us in our efforts to share the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace in Ukraine, for those who working towards it, those in danger, and those who have lost their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For success in our upcoming parish mission that awakens and renews the Holy Spirit in our parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Josephine Healy, 
Marlene Kahn, Bill Cummings, Lexi Schulte, Tom Demko, Denise Anderson de Sia, and those in today's bulletin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pardon me. And for Santina Gallimore, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for all the blessings and graces you have given to us. Please graciously listen to the prayers and petitions of your children. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. During the preparation of gifts, please join together in singing a new song, Drawn to You, number 396 in Breaking Bread. 396, Drawn to You.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for a good and the good of all his own church. O God, who provides a gift to be offered to your name, and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts. We pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered well in his passion, he took breath and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be good heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, <coughs> thy, kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the my room, but only say the words of my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. As we receive the body and blood of Jesus, please let's sing together, Open My Eyes, number 404 in Breaking Bread, 404.
St. Barnabas Lenten PTO Fish Fry is this Friday, March 4, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. in the cafeteria. Dine-in, take-out, or drive-thru is available, and pre-order forms are in the narthex, and I believe at the side door as well as you leave. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, O Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. As we close the celebration, please join together singing glory and praise to our God, number 552 in Breaking Bread. Glory and praise to our God.